welcome to the Programmatic Digest podcast, a weekly roundup of top programmatic news with fellow programmatic ninjas. I'm your host, Ellen Parker, your very own programmatic sensei. Thank you for joining us today. Before we get into today's conversation, subscribe, like, and share. Leave us a comment. If you need any more details, visit our website, programmaticdigest.com, programmaticdigest.com, where you'll be prompted for our new weekly or monthly newsletter. It only alerts you when there's a new episode live. So thank you so much for all your support and love. And remember to be curious. Enjoy the conversation. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome Mia Humanos to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm great, Helene. Nice to see you. I am very excited about today's conversation because we are going to talk about data analytics and data is the language to my heart. But after a few conversations with you and your team, I'm realizing I still don't know enough about what the heck is going on in that, that world. So very, very grateful to have you here. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the conversation so far. I'm going to take the next 30 seconds to a minute to tell you all about my birthday challenge. I'm celebrating my birthday month and I'm doing a birthday challenge in looking for five additional clients to sign up. I'm the founder and chief programmatic sensei of Ellen Parker Consulting LLC, and I specialize in increasing the efficiency of my partners, my agency partners by 25% on average. How do I do it? By providing comprehensive media strategies, auditing operational workflows to help programmatic and digital media teams at excelling and managing client campaigns and thriving in a happier work environment. The last 12 months have been difficult for all of us, and agency teams might be feeling burnout from round the clock camping management, keeping up with this industry trends and learning new platform capabilities. This kind of fatigue leads to human errors that can be easily avoided in the future with my help. So I'm focusing on helping as many companies as I can as I begin a new year of my life, another year of my life this month. Can you help me help you or someone you know that could really benefit from my services? Email me at info at ellenparker.com. That's phonetically helenparker.com. Enjoy the rest of the conversation. Awesome. Happy to be here. Before we get into today's conversation, um, you are the co-founder of ClickBoyant, um, which is basically going to help a lot of us listening because it's turning about 40 hours of data analytics into, what, a few seconds, if I remember correctly. So you're realizing a, you have created a uh, data visualization tool and reporting tool with, uh, that allows agency to take it to the next level. Don't waste as much time pulling the data because the AI is doing it for us. So tell us about yourself because I know that you are um, mom, wife, badass in this industry. And then <laughs> let us know about your 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 genius, which came out as clickvoyant. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. I hope I can live up to your introduction. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been in um, digital marketing analytics for 15 mm -hmm. years. Um, you know, started out as like a little skater girl in a small <laughs> advertising agency in the suburbs and, um, you know, kind of quickly grew up. Like I was counting clicks, mm -hmm. like when MySpace was the most primary, um, social media oh, platform you know it's like throwback yeah. doing it's you, any conversation <laughs> with the word myspace you're like whoa that is yeah. throwback major throwbacks <laughs> i'm a total dinosaur um yeah. and you know like every year my job has been different like i've been doing mm -hmm. analytics for 15 years and it's just changed so much over time you know when i started out there were about 150 marketing technologies now there are 8000 <laughs> yeah <laughs> And the problem is like, A, you know, there's so much digital exhaust that we're creating, like for our iPhones, our apps, mm -hmm. our nests, our, you know, all the other like digital touch points that we have as humans. There are analysts who try to understand the behavior to try to yeah. either A, sometimes sell advertising or B, also make experiences better for you if you're a better actor, right? If you really want to do something good for the um for the community, you do use that data to help build products and marketing messages that are more relevant. Um, but that data, you know, can only be analyzed with somebody by somebody who has statistical research chops. 
Mm-hmm. And not many of us do. Yeah. Um, right now, there's like a $200 billion gap in talent to work on data analysts, data scientists. So that means that, you know, only the biggest and um, largest companies can afford a data scientist <laughs> or yeah. a data analyst. Mm-hmm. And that leaves a lot of other businesses in the lurch. They don't have anybody. So that job is being delegated to a digital strategist yeah. or a creative person or a content con- you know content creator. Yeah. And while they can like pull data and look at data and we're all, you know, driven to be um data literate without the statistical research, sometimes these data driven decisions they're just as good as a random guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we don't yeah, I mean we're lacking um and you're Preaching to the choir, I am in that role, right? So I run a um, programmatic media consultancy business, right? So I offer my clients a handful of, of services. Uh, one is activation, running the campaigns on their behalf and training their team. And the other one is more on a consulting. Like, do you just need help and assistance here and there? I came across you and one of your articles that you, I mean, one of the posts on LinkedIn, and it really intrigued me because some of my activation clients, I am still waste, uh, spending a lot of time doing reporting and part of optimizing on the day-to-day is pulling that report. But when I went through your demo and I was like, yo, this is going to not only help me be efficient, but it's going to help my clientele be efficient. And um, I pride myself into helping my clients save, become 25% more effective with their team, with their department, where they're, again, it's very programmatic media related. But like mm-hmm. now I'm thinking with this tool, I'm able to even increase that number because I help them implement like operational uh, workflow. I, I come up with like, um, like project-based um, system to help them like less focus on the, the admin and then the, the little details and they can, focus on what makes them happy <laughs> and then what gives them money. Right. Um, so, right. so like talk to us about, I know I'm not the only person struggling right now listening with this. So how, how can we tell us more about ClickPoint a, a little bit more, right? Like, first of all, what made you start it? Right. Cause you're a co-founder. Mm -hmm. And then how, tell us about a little bit of that journey. Like what made you like, you know what? I'm going to invest in this thing because people need it. Like there's painful, (laughs) there's a pain out there in our industry and I can help those people. So tell us how you got to there and, and basically why. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, you know, Kate and I, we're my other, my co-founder Kate and Uh I both had, um, dads who had their own small businesses and they both folded during the digital age because they just couldn't Uh, keep up and now you know like similarly you know there's like all these small businesses that are struggling it's like post-pandemic depending Mm -hmm. on like who you were and you know we see our own experience and working for fortune 500 companies that Mm -hmm. were making millions on insights you know, wow. about what people are doing, what are they clicking on? What do they mm-hmm. like? How do they need to see this message? And that is making so much money for them. And it's like all these other companies, there's like 3 million small businesses with either ad spend or e-commerce that mm-hmm. don't have anybody like me. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the sort of like humble beginnings that we have, like we didn't come from anything. I'm an immigrant's daughter. Like mm-hmm. we, you know, I'm, we're just, we're down for the little guy. And yeah. so um, this like, you know, the, the other thing about Kate and me, like we're both kind of unicorns in the industry where we can understand the data, but also tell the story and also collect the data and understand the data architecture. Mm-hmm. So soup to nuts, we can do it all. And like over a 15 year career, people are like, you should just clone yourself. Like if you could clone yourself, like that yeah. would be badass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd love that too. <laughs> and that so we, yeah, we, we, we did it. We just programmed our intelligence into <laughs> this AI that, <laughs> that analyzes raw marketing data the way that we would do it. Gotcha. And, okay. um, you know, I mean, if you look at her LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, we get track records of like making it rain wherever we go. So, yeah. you know, we program that into this AI to like get that AI to like small businesses. If you're, making less than 400,000, 
an annual revenue, all companies can have this for 50 bucks a month. Wow. So it's like, you know, it's like having an analyst in your back pocket. I mean, they, you know, normally companies like or agencies will charge like $300 an hour. Yeah. Even a freelancer who's really good um, is like $100 an hour. Yeah, so, I looked into some of them to help me. I, I needed help to just, I don't know, do do something. I wanted to, I, I'm all about working smart, not hard. Not because yeah. I'm lazy, but because um, I have a whole life outside of what I do. I have a baby, I have a husband, I have a squad. I want to be a millionaire. I'm trying to uh, look good when I put on clothes. I'm trying to uh, dance when I want to dance. I want to go get, I don't know, my nails done. No, I'm, I'm trying to be smart about things. Like there's so long are the days where you have to spend 12 hours to be able to be productive. No, I can do it in six, seven hours. Right now, mm-hmm. I'm not because I know there's an opportunity opportunity, opportunity for me to autom- automate somewhere. And that's where, that's where you come into place. So I'm really oh, happy yeah. in the fact that um, you were able to clone your brain into something that I could use. And I'm actually testing for those uh, who doesn't know. So I'm in the midst of testing it for some of the clients, but also for myself because I'm building this podcast and I want to build a community and I want to be able to continue increasing this platform for those that, like you said, may not be little guys, but may not have the platform of the the big New York or Los Angeles. I always shit on them. I'm sorry, but I'm always sitting <laughs> on the big agency. <laughs> I've worked with them, but just so you know, <laughs> there yeah, are great I mean, people, but <laughs> there's a lot amazing. of us out here, right? <laughs> For real. I mean, there are, there are like, I don't know, 30,000 agencies in the world mm-hmm. and almost all of them are small, like you, like me. Mm-hmm. Um, I came from that big agency world and, you know, they're run by finance. Yeah. They're not run by, they're not run by, you know, people who want to have the best ideas or people who want to like you know, change the world. They're run by the finance department. And so for me, like when I was an analyst, the most painful thing was like analytics would be cut from scope because A, it was too expensive. You know why it was too expensive? (laughs) Because we're expensive, but then also the agency need to make a margin. So they mark us up like 200%. So we were $300 an hour. So, you know, what when the SOW come for like a redesign or media plan, analytics first to get cut. Yeah. So analytics and creative, I don't think we give analytics and creative a lot of love or the flowers that they deserve. Like I've worked with on several projects very recently. That's that we're not talking about last year or pre COVID problem. Y'all this is still happening. I've worked Mm -hmm. with agencies in the last six months that don't want to invest in creative scope or analytic reporting. Oh, I'll just get a report a raw report. But okay, cool. Let me schedule that. That's cool. No big deal. You'll know how to translate. But then I'm finding out that I still have to help translate some of this data. Is this good? Is this bad? Mm -hmm. Well, then you need to invest because that's an additional time. Um, And so at the end, at the end of the day, I'm doing what I'm doing because I, I, I know I can help. And that's my whole purpose. But ultimately, it goes down to that breadwinner, right? Like (laughs) You got to be smart and you have to make sure that you're, you're spending the time you need. And Mm -hmm. you got to invest in your analytics team. Like really? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think like making that inexpensive Mm -hmm. allows people to see what the value you get. It's like, you know, it's easy to be like, it's also like, you know, I don't know, investing in like, um, in your, in like your dental care, (laughs) you know, like I'm like investing the time to like get that, like every six month cleaning or blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, you know, like that it may not always be, sometimes it's a finance, like it's a financial investment, but all the time it's just like a, you don't do it. And when you don't do it, you realize like the repercussions later, like Mm -hmm. you got to get all this work done. So in the same way, like, you know, a lot of our analytics sometimes even illustrates the value of creative. Mm -hmm. So when we do analysis, it's always, it's not just like what's going on with the data, but it's like, what's going on with these creatives, right? What's going like, which ones are performing best and which ones are not performing as well, Mm -hmm. which ones have the best ROAS, you know, and like that analytics shows the value of design. Mm -hmm. What is the ROI of design and the ROI Mm -hmm. of a creative message? Yes. So when you cut both of those two, you're completely, you're flying completely blind Mm -hmm. or like Avinash Kaushik used to say, oh, you're using like, you're, you're, you're making decisions by the hippo, which is the highest paid person in the organization. (laughs) Wow. That's for me. You know, there's, 
I, I think we're beyond wow. this now, but there was a time where like creative and data were sort of like, you know, contra oh, each other. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. For sure. But I actually think that, you know, we come to a place and especially with me and Kate, like we've come to a place where we work with creative to know like, well, this is a listening exercise. It's not about data performance. It's a listening exercise. How do people behave? How do they react? Let's test it. And like, I work with a great agency, one of our clients, um, DVXD, holla, uh, hey. they're in Spano, <laughs> but they're like a UX company and they design websites. And so like with them, like we're able to increase revenue for the clients by looking at data, creative, testing it, seeing what the data says, coming back. And they don't have an analyst in house. They use ClickBoyant plus a couple hours from us. Wow. That's, that's like the, that's amazing. I mean, this is, this is exactly what we need to hear. This is exactly this. I think it's a tool that is so needed into, in, in our industry. And we're, and we're not saying like, oh, you're your data analyst. Use ClickBoyant. No, 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 no. We're just saying that you have to make sure you invest in both. Like, oh, do yeah. You think, so what I like to say in programmatic media is that um, it's like a train, right? Um, the train can go from A to B without, because there's like, it's a straight line. It can go from A to B, but you still need a conductor, right? You still need a conductor just in case ish happened, just in case you need to make stops here. And that mm-hmm. any, every stops represent a targeting levers or optimizing that targeting lever, right? Um, so do you think click buoyant, um, could be compared to that analogy? Like you, it's the train, it could be run by itself, but you might still need somebody to like, um, I don't know, set it up or, um, QA it or sexify the, the, the report, even though some of the report that I've seen in your demo was like super sexy to me. Um, but do you think that that makes sense to explain it that way? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, just like programmatic, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's also a little bit AI at work there, too. Yep. You know, trying to like understand and learn the audiences. But, you know, sometimes like robots don't get it all right. (laughs) Like they they don't know everything about people. You know, sometimes you see men showing up in your in your targeting campaign. You got to figure out, like, why is that happening? You know, like I, I, I like I. I just saw a case study about this. Like there was like a, a learning, the learning algorithms, like it was like a yoga thing and it was targeting mm-hmm. like mostly women. And then they saw a lot of men show up in their these conversion rates. Mm-hmm. And so it was just trying to figure out like, you know, what was a robot trying to understand about this? And it just ter- turned out that there was like other men who needed yoga pants too. <laughs> so, you know, and so they made a whole new line out of that. And that is exactly like the kind of thing, like, you know, like Facebook algorithms are not going to be able to tell you what's going on. You need that conductor as mm. it to go with your analogy. Yeah. With Clickvoyant, it's kind of a similar way. Like what it does is it ingests all the data from Google Analytics. Mm-hmm. It looks at everything from traffic channels to campaigns to pages to device types to audiences and okay. finds like this wide breadth of insight that's going on mm-hmm. from channel to a conversion. Okay. And then it marks an X in the ground for like where humans should dig. Where's the money at? Like all of it's like, where's the money? Here's you're gonna make op- you're gonna make optimizations if you're gonna change budget from this to this campaign, or you're also gonna make money optimizations if you you know optimize these five landing pages. And we quantify yeah. that for you. Say this is gonna be worth ten thousand dollars in the next thirty days. Wow. Um, but it takes a human to like look at those pages yeah. and see what's wrong with these. So like. In one example, one of our clients um, said, okay, these pages are going to, we need to reduce the bounce rate on these pages because it's going to give us like another, you know, $30,000. Yeah. And they look at them, a human takes a look at them and go, oh shit, these are the same templates. <laughs> this yeah. particular template on our CMS is not working for us. Wow. So, you know, that conductor analogy, it fits exactly with click buoyant. Oh, that's awesome. And you know, y'all, y'all listening Clickborn is not a paid sponsor of the podcast yet, but to this episode <laughs> is not. I want to make sure I, I preface this because I am very, I was very intrigued about talking to you. And I said, all right, well, I think the listeners can benefit from a product like this, but also from your knowledge and your insight and just your badassery, right? Mm. So I want to preface this because we've been talking specifically about the tool, the whole the whole time, but it's such as like, 
before I got into the, the recording, we said, oh, let's talk about the pros and cons in the industry. But like, this is it. This is why this product was, was created is because there was an opportunity to address that cons. And this is what it is. So it's all about one automated something that maybe a human shouldn't be doing or so that that human can save time and invest that time and knowledge and insight into something else. So the Big Voyant is doing what we can all do it, obviously, right? But it's going to take you a lot of time. <laughs> so oh, what are yeah. you going to do with that time? That person can continue uh, implementing, you know, can, can really spend time into looking at the data, which is much more important, right? So you're wasting less time re- pulling all those reports and those insights. But now you're focusing that time into something that is actually going to translate into dollars. So since we've been talking about creative, I, I wanted to um, ask you about this case study that you guys posted on your website. I, I think it was a blog, right? Mm-hmm. And so the agency is called Dig Data, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, the Dig Data is a marketing analytics consulting firm. Um, but the particular, I guess, uh, the owner, Kate, no, wait, Kate is the veteran. Kate is the owner. Kate is the owner of Dig Data. And I, I will say that like okay. Kate is also our co-founder. So we're not okay. only, I mean, and this is it, Helene. Like mm-hmm. we are also, so the case study is like Dig Data. That was Kate's uh, analytics consulting company. Gotcha. Okay. And Tell me more. Okay. we built Click Buoyant so she could use that mm-hmm. to expand her capability and expand wow. her offering. Yeah. So um, so we're not just our own, you know, what, what is the hair club for men? Like, I'm not just a member, but I'm a customer. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Uh, what's his, uh, Robert Brill was on, from Brill Media, yo. He, he was on the podcast and he was like, well, during COVID, I wanted to help my, my clients and, and customers, but then I had the services I was offering, but I didn't know exactly if it was going to work. So I wanted to taste my own pudding. So that's basically mm-hmm. a great uh, illustration of, of what you guys are doing before you went in, or at least as you're going out, you're tasting your own pudding and it's working for them because like, if I scroll down, it says clearly that you were able to what, uncover $21,000 in opportunity or revenue opportunity. Is that correct? Yeah. That's what ClickVoyant does. Like it mm-hmm. automates all, like all the stuff that Kate and I would do as analysts for our customers. We automate that Mm-hmm. And it spits out a PowerPoint presentation for mm-hmm. us in 10 okay. minutes. Yeah. So in 10 minutes, that PowerPoint presentation says, these are all the insights. This is worth $21,000. Mm-hmm. Boom. It's like 15 minutes later. Now let's get to work. Yeah. You know, like let's get to work on all these optimizations that we could do. Creative, landing pages, media budgets, like all that stuff. So, um, you know, when Kate you started to use ClickVoyant on her own customers. Mm-hmm. She increased her productivity 10 or three times. Mm-hmm. So she could take on more clients mm-hmm. with more margin. So that means like, we're all making money here, folks, right? <laughs> we're all making money now. Like yeah. I got more, I can take more clients. I don't need to get more stringers or contractors. Or if I'm one analyst, then we can have that one analyst do 10 instead yeah. of I mean, and the fact is, like, we're not taking no jobs. There's nobody out there. There are all these jobs. Yeah. And no one can do it. So what we're saying is we are empowering the people who can do this to do more. Wow. Right. Or like people who can interpret this data. We just started a web analytics free training for women who lost their jobs in the pandemic. Okay. And our thesis here is that all these things that require to be an analyst, first of all, there's the math part is maybe 50%, but the other 50% is communication and storytelling, tenacity, judgment, creativity. The fact is that even the people who can do analytics, that last part, they don't got that, a lot mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. And that's why they call people like me and Kate unicorns because we can communicate, we could talk about stuff, we can make it simple. Yeah. You know, you got analysts out there sometimes who are acting like, you know, like the the comic book dude on the Simpsons, like this yeah. is too hard. You <laughs> never know. You can never know how much I know, yeah. you know, and Kate and I, our, our thesis, we're enablers. Like we're going to enable you to do this. Like, like, just like mom, she's a teacher. I'm, you know, I'm a teacher. We have this women's training for people who lot, like who are underemployed women who are underemployed and they're learning how to do it without the cumbersome or like the, the cumbersome task of learning the tech. 
Mm-hmm. The Python, the statistics. It's like clairvoyant, boom, boom, does the analysis. And now they can interpret data yeah. and help another website or small business owner know what to do. Cause they're like designers from other fields, they're from social media, they're from like email marketing. They yeah. you know like these other fields that they're learning how to interpret this data so they can become a new type of analyst with the power of clairvoyant. Wow. Yeah. And wow. I will say this. Okay. The other thing about, you know, getting your, uh, getting to your other shit, to your mom stuff, to the yoga mm-hmm. class, to the yeah. Pilates, you know, we dream of a 30 hour work week, mm-hmm. like click voyant. Our goal is to make our work week 30. I mean, it is 30 hours right now, mm-hmm. but we'd like to sustain that. And we think, you know, people are still always asking us like, how can you guys do so much? Mm-hmm. How, how did you get this done so quickly? Mm-hmm. It's like, we automate what we can so that we can be as efficient as possible. And we don't have to suffer any pay cuts because the value of the work is still yeah. there, but we can work for 30 hours a week and do all of our other shit. Straight up, straight up, it's straight talk. I've been working for what myself and at home for, I don't know, three years now, two years and a half, give or take. And I've had, the most productive days working here because I time block and sometimes it's just not, um, and sometimes it's just not, um, what I'm I'm trying to say. It's not realistic for, for some people that are more like client facing sales. You can't just time block and do your, okay. I understand, but I I can be so much more productive in a six hour timeframe than I was Mm -hmm. in an eight to nine hours in the office. Like, there's oh, yeah. a lot of BSing happening in the office. Like we were talking For all real? the time, getting some work done. So mm-hmm. I fully believe in, I don't know which Facebook post is was. And of course, if it's on Facebook, it's legit, y'all. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, it, was a, it was a post about one European country that had, that went down to four day a week, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So I know, I know some of you... Probably Finland, those yeah. northern Europeans, they know how it's to all, do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like first of all, they have healthcare for everybody. There's like <laughs> what it was like three, four months or a few months of maternity and paternity leave paid. You oh, know, girl. they're it's living like the best months. life. It's like eight months maternity. Yeah, that's that's the best thing. So um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I hear that. I think I think it's doable. I I, you know, again, it's hard at this time because of what happened. But I just want to encourage whoever's listening that you, if you're, if you're not like in a space of mind where you can receive information and stay productive is because like your person and your heart are not. So you have to take care of that person first before you can even be productive. It's like when they say uh, uh, you have to heal yourself before you can love again, or you have to love yourself before you can love again. Like real talk, that's all it is. Like if you want to be productive, if you're not getting things done, if you feel like you're overwhelmed all the time, maybe you just to reassess like your priorities personally first, maybe spiritually, you know, mentally, yeah. because like if everything in your person is not aligned, you, you're not going to get, you're just working, but you're not like being fulfilled. And I can guarantee you, within that following month, three months, whichever, you're going to feel so burnt out because you're not living your life. You know what I mean? You're not living your best life. So mm-hmm. I think reassessing your priorities, reassessing your day, um, automating things, reaching out to me about, about this, this product, like it's a great start. And I think it's a great segue into our closing um, segment where I like to ask a few fun questions, right? Um, okay. So uh, let's do this. Which one I'm going to ask today? So tell me three fun facts about yourself. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I once I took a two year sabbatical from digital marketing analytics mm, okay. to uh, some um, like I would say that it was public good, public uh-huh. sector good with my data skills working on. Um, some community campaigns in the Philippines. Oh, nice. Uh, which is my mother country. Okay. And I also work for Rappler, which was a sort of like the vice media of the Philippines. Okay. okay. Um, only independent media um, that was kind of going against big government there. And so I helped them establish a mark um, sort of digital analytics practice on their media platform mm-hmm. where I won a Google News initiative grant. So 
holla to the Google people out there. That was pretty fun. Um, <laughs> they are trying to help publishers gain more revenue that they originally took. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> okay, Google. Why am I not surprised? Fun. Okay. Second. Uh, second is so I you know I grew up a. I grew up, a, this is a dirty secret, actually. I grew up uh -oh. a skater, like a skater at skate park. So my girlfriend's oh, okay. gonna, <laughs> girl gonna kill me. Um, but in the, so I have two daughters, one 10 and one five, and we just rediscovered roller skating. Oh, nice. So, That's fun. I've been roller skating. I can get funky on my roller skates okay, right now. Okay. I was like learning how to tricks. <laughs> So we're regulars at our roller skating rink at the tennis courts. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I used to roller skate way back when. And I have proof on my legs to show that I was very daredevilish. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I haven't roller skated in so long. I should. We should get back into something fun like that. Oh, you should do it, girl. Like it's been so fun. I mean, I grew up roller skating with my dad. Like in uh -huh. like you know, like a in the black community in Chicago, he would take mm -hmm. us all the time and to so just that. like reliving that whole thing is just oh. super fun with the dances <laughs> and the hip hop <laughs> that is so fun that sounds so great yeah okay so i think you owe us one last one. Oh man okay so the other last one is um that i uh really am i'm, I'm not doing it right now but i'm a big fan of pattern clashing that's my latest obsession mm -hmm. so like i'm wearing a, t a shirt with a pattern oh, okay. with, a pants with a pattern that don't match each other exactly mm -hmm. um it's a really fun puzzle piece because you have all these like pattern prints and stuff you got to put them together and make them look good okay. so you can follow me on instagram if you want to check that out <laughs> yes okay okay so we'll have mia's information Big Boyan's information and her Instagram in the show notes. And then on social media, of course, I'll push some of that. So um, <laughs> last question, last question before we go is that. Um, so if uh, you had to tell yourself or your your freshman self one advice now that you gain all this knowledge, what will it be? Um, I mean, I would say you know don't stop questioning whether what we're doing is right mm. i think that is something that i've always had i think at the early stage of my career i didn't do it as much because i was young mm -hmm. um but i think if i had you know like clickvoyant challenging what we're doing about data understanding mm -hmm. if things if what we're doing is right you know, you know, the, I mean, I know we all know about Cambridge Analytica and yeah. what happened with the elections. And, you mm -hmm. know, there is definitely like a Jedi and Sith of data out there. Um, and so questioning whether things are right is, mm -hmm. I think, something that I didn't do early on in my career. Yes, so, awesome. you know, I would say I would say I mean, I'm vociferous about it now. But <laughs> if I had been in my 20s, I might have gotten to click point a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, what I was wow. you know, as that technology awesome. grows, we have to keep you know yeah, that, question mm -hmm. can we should we if we can should we still mm, that's real that's real well thank you so much for coming here and uh thank you spreading some unicorn love and insight <laughs> and knowledge we really appreciate it and this is not the last time mia will be here but i can guarantee that we have so much more questions to ask and then so so we're really appreciative of you making the time thank you so much i love it i love to do it again thank you Aline. thanks Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your love and support. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you have any questions, feedback, or just simply want to say hi, email us at info at programmaticdigest.com. You can also visit the website, programmaticdigest.com, programmaticdigest.com, where we're always looking for guest hosts. We're always looking, we're also looking for sponsors. So hit us up if you're interested.